Good afternoon, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz, and today we're going to be taking a look at Tropical Cyclone Mega, now a severe tropical cyclone. As per preliminary unofficial estimates from the Joint Typhoon Warning Centre, the Bureau of Meteorology is still holding on to Category 2 status, but this storm likely is stronger than Category 2 status at this time. It's just hours away from landfall. We're going to be talking about all the details of this tropical cyclone's current intensity in this forecast update, and then we're going to also take a look at the forecast for this storm in terms of the landfall and also the amount of rainfall that's going to be falling across far northern Queensland later on in the video. And then after that, we'll take a look at the West Australian cyclone threat. A lot to get through in this update. If you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. So take a look at the storm right now on the visible satellite imagery. You can see it is firing up some very decent convection right now. Winds haven't changed too much from this morning. Um, if you can remember from this morning's update, winds are around 70 kilometers an hour on Centre Island. They are slowly increasing at this time, I reckon, given another two or three more hours if you're watching the wind observations up across Centre Island, which is uh, through here near Malulua. Um, these wind observations, they are going to skyrocket in terms of strength and intensity. The storm's core is not quite approaching Centre Island at this time. It is in the middle of the Gulf of Carpentaria. Well, not in the middle, but it is over water, a significant amount of water. You can see on the radar imagery right now, which is what we're looking at here, we're looking out for the eye wall of the system. Now, the storm does have a defined eye. Um, I know it doesn't look that way on Saturday satellite imagery and the satellite imagery is generally quite deceiving because it can be many hours behind the true intensity of the cyclone and in this case it definitely is but we've got a defined eye-like feature if you're tracing out where the cursor is right now I'll zoom in just a little bit more but if you're tracing out where the cur uh, cursor is you can see there's a lot of rainfall down here some strong rain uh, signals down here with a lightning and then you've got a lot of rainfall up here approaching Groot Island and in here is where a relatively large eye is starting to develop. Now as we all know with tropical cyclones they do try and develop an eye and an eye is a great signal that this storm is or that all storms in general are intensifying and are intensifying fast. We saw Cyclone Jasper squeeze out an eye um, in the middle of the Coral Sea and it nearly got to category 5 status because of it and this cyclone is trying to squeeze out an eye and I would not be shocked if this does get to high-end Category 3 status or even Category 4 status with the Bureau of Meteorology coming on board with that now too. They're highlighting the possibility of wind speeds up to 215 kilometers an hour upon landfall. So this storm is going to be quite a lot stronger than initially expected. It's certainly going to be the strongest landfall of the 2024 Australian region cyclone season, that's for sure. Well, I certainly hope it will be because anything stronger than this, you're pushing into high-end Category 4 or Category 5 status, which is very concerning indeed. Um, I know the radar imagery looks looks really bad from the um, from this angle here, but it's because it's around 300 kilometers away from the Mornington Island radar located over here where the cursor is. So it's very hard to get an accurate look of the radar imagery. And in fact, we're looking at the rain radar quite a lot, um, uh, quite high up in the tropical cyclone because of the Earth's curve, uh, curvature. Um, the storm is actually not represented well on the radar imagery, but it does give you a good idea on what the storm is doing and what it looks like. So bear with me on that front. Now we'll take a look at the infrared satellite imagery. I know that this is another very confusing bunch of colours to be looking at as well for people not used to tracking tropical cyclones in this uh, kind of detail, but this gives us a great idea on how strong the thunderstorms are. Now, the temperature that you see here, minus 90 degrees Celsius, is actually colder than that um, in the, on the top of the cloud tops here. That gives you an idea of how tall these thunderclouds are, and generally speaking, the taller the thunderclouds, the stronger the storm or the stronger the cyclone, and that is exactly what we've got here. We've got a textbook, very powerful and rapidly intensifying tropical cyclone starting to develop here um, as it moves towards its final landfall on the Northern Territory. Certainly looking very impressive, that's for sure, on the satellite imagery. These colours, generally speaking, reds, browns, blacks and whites mean very strong and intense thunderstorm activity. Um, when you look at yellows and uh, greens, then you're talking about moderate storm activity, but generally speaking here, it's the blacks and the whites where the real deal of activity is. And of course, these colours colors change um, around different parts of Australia, depending on the latitude of the location that we're talking about, because that's just how thunderstorms work uh, through an entire phenomenon called the tropopause. Very confusing stuff, and it will take me an hour to explain that in proper detail, so I'm not going to here. You might also be able to note that the storm isn't looking very smooth. It's got these sort of shear marks here. You can see these sort of uh, lines extending out from the centre, or kind of um, outside of the centre. These lines are kind of running parallel to each other. That is indicative of high-level 
levels of wind shear around the tropical cyclone. Now, wind shear, generally speaking, tears the tropical cyclone apart. Here, it's actually aiding the storm in terms of providing uh, something called outflow, which means it's able to really uh, develop its inner core very nicely because it's able to, it will kind of excrete dry air. Think of it like that. That's sort of what outflow is. Um, but in this case here, if the wind shear was to get any higher, then this tropical cyclone could completely collapse in on itself. And considering that it is in a borderline hostile environment uh, for tropical cyclone intensification right now, the cyclone Megan, it could still completely fail and really weaken significantly before landfall. And that's why I'm very keen on watching these wind observations down here on Centre Island throughout the day, because right now they are a lot stronger than they should be. The Bureau of Meteorology doesn't have gale force winds crossing the Northern Territory coastline until about 5 or 6 p.m. tonight, but currently at about oh, 2 p.m. local time, 3 p.m. local time on Centre Island, we're already seeing wind speeds approaching 72 or 75 kilometres an hour. You're talking mid-range category one status there, and wind gusts likely going to be a lot stronger than that, up to around 100 kilometres an hour. So if you do live around Robinson River, Borolula, or on Centre Island or Group Island or around Mornington Island, please give me frequent updates in the comment section down below. They're really helping me make these videos as well, so I do thank you for that in advance. That was an awful lot of detail. So over the past six minutes, we just talked about what's going on with a tropical cyclone. Now we're going to take a look at the forecast for this tropical cyclone. It's very close to land right now. It's going to be getting closer and closer to land, of course, throughout the course of today. And we're expecting a landfall on Centre Island probably at around 6 to 8 p.m. local time tonight. It could be a little bit earlier. It could be a little bit later. It's going to be a um, so it's going to be strengthening right up towards landfall, and it's also going to be a very slow move moving system right up towards landfall as well. Uh, it's not going to be moving very fast. And then throughout the course of Monday and Tuesday, we're expecting the system to completely stall as well over the top of Borulula. And it will probably hold cyclone status until about Monday evening when it will finally start to slowly weaken off. But that's bad news in the sense we're going to be seeing a lot of rainfall fall around um, the Centre Island, Borulula sort of area. And I mean, spoiler alert, we're probably looking at up to 600 millimetres falling over the next three days in this part of the Northern Territory, five to 600 millimetres. Very, very heavy rainfall, torrential rainfall that we're going to be seeing here up upon the landfall site. Borulula itself expecting about 300 millimetres. Other parts of Centre Island expecting around three to 400 millimetres. But I mean, just a really extreme amount of rainfall here. And coupled with a storm surge expected to be around four to six feet above the highest astronomical time, that's about one and a half to two metres above the highest astronomical time. We're going to be seeing some pretty significant flooding along a lot of this part of the Northern Territory coastline. Um, the, of course, a very sparsely populated part of Australia. It's not often that they receive tropical cyclone impacts up here. And I mean, there's very few people that do live up in this part of the Northern Territory, in this part of Australia um, as a whole. However, still the three to 4,000 people that are under the cyclone warning right now really do need to take this very seriously because this is going to cause some very significant flooding. And there's a good chance that this part of the Northern Territory is going to be completely cut off um, from all main infrastructure and road networks for a good couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks, depending on how remote the areas are. This is going to be a very significant tropical cyclone landfall, um, unless the storm completely collapses in on itself in the next couple of hours, which is becoming a de decreasing possibility considering the system just keeps looking better and better and better. Uh, so yeah, quite a lot to really take in here. And the Bureau of Meteorology, they haven't done a good job in forecasting this tropical cyclone. I can't necessarily say that I blame them considering that um, it, it was a very small system and it was gonna be a very difficult system to forecast uh, in terms of a peak intensity. But I mean, they could have given us a little bit more warning and maybe even a bigger, bigger scope of possibility because for a couple of days, um, there was always the potential for this tropical cyclone cyclone to go boom and that's what it has done and the Bureau of Meteorology could have given us a couple more days of warning um in regards to how strong this tropical cyclone could have gotten because the maximum potential intensity that this storm could have gotten to was category four uh, dare I say even category five status here. It's not going to get to category five status and it's highly unlikely it's going to get to category four status even, but just a heads up there, uh, that would have been very much appreciated for a lot of the residents in this part of the Northern Territory because this is going to catch a lot of people off guard. They've done a very good job with their current forecast though, highlighting the possibility of wind speeds up to 215 
kilometres an hour upon landfall. That is a very plausible forecast, and I genuinely, I genuinely very respect that forecast as well. The forecast models are running just a little bit behind on this storm right now. The eastern we have calling for 200 kilometre an hour winds as a peak. The axis running very much quite far behind right now, but again, it's a small tropical cyclone, so the models are having a very hard time predicting this tropical cyclone. And it's not so much the forecast anymore, it's about the now on this tropical cyclone. But 215 kilometre an hour winds, that's very plausible. Uh, peak wind speeds of around 150 kilometres an hour on Centre Island is what I'm expecting, and peak wind gusts up to 210 kilometres an hour there is also what I'm expecting. Uh, one thing's for sure, the little community of Mulalua here, which I just believe is a, a bit of a shire or a couple of homesteads on Centre Island, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, they're going to get absolutely hammered from this tropical cyclone, that's for sure. There, this will be one of the strongest cyclone impacts that they have received in the past 100 years, um, and it's going to be a bullseye on top of Centre Island as well. Certainly a very small tropical cyclone, though. I mean, you can see it here in the Gulf of Carpentaria. It's kind of hard to spot um, in Australia. Well, it's pretty easy to spot, I guess, with, in terms of the wind swath, but it, it's a very small, small system with a maximum diameter of probably only around 100 to 150 kilometres across. So it's not a big system in terms of area, and as usual with small systems, they can blow up like crazy. We have briefly talked about rainfall just a couple of minutes ago, but I do feel like we really need to in-depth talk about rainfall, considering there's a lot of rainfall that's going to be coming ashore. We'll just switch back to the satellite imagery real quick, and I'll explain all of this cloud through here that's not directly associated with what we call the central dense overcast or the main thunderstorm activity around the tropical cyclone. This is what we call inflow, and these inflow bands actually carry some very strong thunderstorms, even though they look like nothing compared to the tropical cyclone itself. They do have some fairly strong thunderstorms in them, and don't be fooled, even these uh, small streams clouds that are moving through around the Cairns area, which I'll get to in a couple of minutes, they're housing some very heavy and slow moving rainfall as well. And it's going to be a very wet day across a lot of the Cape York Peninsula. And then the closer you get to the tropical cyclone as well, rainfall accumulation is going to go through the roof as well throughout Sunday, Monday, and then into Tuesday too. It's going to be a very slow moving tropical cyclone, as I said. So it's just going to be streaming in moisture from the Gulf of Carpentaria and the Northern Coral Sea until probably about Wednesday morning when it should hopefully slowly start to wheeze off. But I mean, even then, again, it's just going to be this pulse thunderstorm activity across the Cape York Peninsula right throughout the week. And this is where we're going to be seeing rainfall accumulations over the next five days up towards 150 millimetres for already saturated areas of the Cape York Peninsula and even higher accumulations up to 250 or 300 millimetres for areas around the Gulf of Carpentaria, including Mornington Island up towards Thursday Island and Weeper. And then also on the Cassowary Coast, extending from Cooktown down to around Lucinda or Cardwell, including Cairns and Innisfail. And let me tell you, those areas don't need any more rainfall. I think I say that basically every video on this channel now. Those areas need no more rainfall, that's for sure. Also, just before we go and take a look at that uh, over, uh, over around Queensland, I'd like to talk about how much rainfall is expected as this system moves through the Northern Territory. It's going to be moving slowly through the Northern Territory as we get through Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And it will be, as I said, a slow moving system. So rainfall accumulations in the central parts of the Northern Territory around Wave Hill um, and then across down to maybe Docker River as well. Maybe Docker River's a lot further south, but across to Docker River and then inland into uh, Western Australia, expect rainfall accumulations around two to 300 millimetres. It certainly will be the last good rainfall of the wet season for 2024. Some good rainfall also expected up around Darwin. I know they've copped an absolute drenching from this tropical cyclone's formation so far already. Uh, but yeah, a lot of rainfall just can be expected in general across parts of Central Australia. And it's going to be all throughout the Northern Territory as well, and then parts of Queensland and New South Wales. I believe that rainfall um, through Central Australia is going to be more of a five to 10 day sort of thing where we get a lot of thunderstorm activity from the remnants of uh, tropical cyclone Megan. Uh, and yeah, it's certainly something that we're gonna have to be watching, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, a lot of rainfall can be expected across Central Australia. And also to note, a little bit of rainfall expected along coastal New South Wales um, over the coming 24 hours as well that I haven't really been talking about. But let's go up to far Northern Queensland and talk about what sort of rainfall we're expecting up there because you can see between the Eastern RBF and the Access G3 model, generally two fairly reliable forecast models in terms of rainfall, up to 800 millimetres can be expected for locations around the far north Queensland coastline. Huge rainfall quantities, very, very heavy rainfall is likely from this system. And if we were to take a look at the radar imagery right now, you can already see cans copping an absolute drenching. We're talking about rainfall totals of around 20 to 30 millimetres an hour in the absolute wettest of locations. Cans itself is already picked up 50 millimetres.
millimeters today uh, since 9 a.m. So just a couple of hours, 50 millimeters, and that's likely going to continue to skyrocket throughout today because this is some very slow moving heavy rainfall that I have been talking about that had the potential to come in and it certainly has come in in all of its glory uh, this Sunday. And then it will also last in towards Monday as well. We'll likely be seeing the heavy rainfall um, move further south down towards Innisfail and Tully. Um, and yeah, throughout Tuesday and Wednesday as well, expect on and off heavy to well, moderate to heavy showers. Wednesday will be likely a little bit drier, same with Thursday and possibly Friday as well before it um, definitely wetens itself up again uh, Saturday and Sunday and then also early next week as well, Monday and Tuesday, a little bit of rainfall also expected to fall uh, then. So definitely going to be just this on and off showery activity after this tropical cyclone from Tuesday um, right through uh, to the next kind of 10 days or so after Tuesday, we're expecting this on and off showery activity. So there's just this annoying sort of rainfall that's going to be falling along a lot of the Casquary coast around the Cairns sort of area. Now the axis is definitely being more bullish in terms of the peak rainfall that is expected. They're calling for peak accumulations approaching a thousand millimeters along the coastline. I think that that's quite bullish from the Axis G3 model. The Axis generally overestimates big time in terms of rainfall, but it's certainly possible at this time. A lot of rainfall expected from locations between Ingham up towards Lucinda, Cardwell, South Mission Beach, and then towards Tully in this fell and up towards Kansas. Well, it shouldn't penetrate too far inland, but still communities such as Atherton and Ravenso could pick up a significant amount of rainfall too. And it's just going to add to the flooding situation that they've got up here in far northern Queensland. And they've had a very wet, wet season so far. I know a lot of people have been saying that it's average. It's very similar to wet seasons of the 70s and the 80s. But it is actually about 30% wetter than even the average wet season back 50 years ago. So they've had a lot of rainfall up here. And more rainfall is certainly not welcome. Certainly, a 1,000 millimetres of rainfall will not be welcome up here around the Cairns area. Um, my best guess, over the next 24 to 48 hours, expect another 100 millimetres across a lot of this um, area, maybe up towards 150 millimetres in the right mountainous areas. And then over the next eight to 10 days, expect around, or at a guess, maybe four to 500 millimetres in the absolute wettest of locations, and maybe a further 300 millimetres across a lot of far northern Queensland. Still an awful lot of rainfall, but it's nothing compared to the 12 to 1300 millimetres that uh, the Access G3 model is kind of maxing out at expecting at this time. They're also expecting a lot of rainfall around the landfill site. In fact, I mean, this is a bit of a model glitch right here, but you're talking around 13 to 1400 millimetres. That's not going to happen. In no world does that happen um, here. That's You're talking probably about four to five years worth of rainfall, especially inland towards Robinson River, not a notoriously wet part of the Gulf of Carpentaria, and their rainfall can vary dramatically year on year. Uh, but still, though, a lot of rainfall can be expected uh, from this tropical cyclone as it moves through. Um yeah, that's a lot of talking, that's for sure. This is a very significant tropical cyclone threat. It will likely intensify it further from its Category 2 status right now. I mean, I genuinely think that it's a Category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone at this time, but I'm not going to pull the trigger until the, until the Bureau of Meteorology pulls the trigger, uh, just because I don't really want to be wrong in a situation like this where you're sort of playing with people's well-being, livelihoods, and lives. This is a very significant cyclone threat, though, and you need to be hunkering down now, especially if you live on Centre Island, which is a very small population of course but if you live on Centre Island and you're watching this video first of all hello great to have you watching but make sure you are staying safe and definitely start hunkering down from this tropical cyclone now because full-blown cyclone conditions are occurring there and tropical cyclone conditions are going to extend from the Queensland Northern Territory border throughout um, a lot of Boralula, Robinson River and then it probably across to communities such as uh, the funny name Bing Bong uh, which is close to Port Roper but I believe Bing Bong is located around here on this little river delta here very sparsely populated region of Australia though. So again, not many people are under threat from this tropical cyclone, but the people that are under threat, um, genuinely speaking, they are not going to receive good impacts from this tropical cyclone. This is gonna be a very strong impact. And I mean, just in the time that it's taken me to record this video on the past half an hour, you can see the eye wall already really starting to become very apparent on the radar imagery now as it approaches Centre Island, and it's only going to uh, get worse from here. This is a strengthening tropical cyclone threat. There'll be 
more updates today and tomorrow as necessary, including a landfall update as this tropical cyclone moves ashore. A very significant threat to land. Make sure you are staying safe if you do live in far northern Queensland from the rainfall and also parts of the Northern Territory on the Carpentaria coastline. If you are under threat from this tropical cyclone, take all warnings seriously. Stay up to date with the Bureau of Meteorology and the ABC and your local Shire office as well. Make sure you are subscribed and I'd like to give a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their name's on screen right now and if you did appreciate this update and you want to see more stuff like this, make sure you are subscribed and if you want to show more support than most, then please do click the join button down below and select the channel sponsor option. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.